absolute value in equality is an inequality that has an absolute value in it and it has an inequality symbol. Um, and so if you want to solve absolute value inequalities, then there are two important uh, rules that you need to know in order to be able to get rid of the absolute value bars. And so the first one is you want to pay attention to whether the absolute value is less than the number or greater than the number. So the first case is if you have the absolute value of something and it's less than a number, then in order to drop the absolute value bars, you have to create a three-part inequality. And then you create the three-part inequality by first just dropping the absolute value bar. So I just dropped the bars. And then you stick another inequality, that same inequality, on the left side of the variable. And you stick that number negative on the other side of that inequality. So I created a three-part inequality by dropping the absolute value bar, sticking on another inequality, and the opposite of that number on the other side. So that's the first case. The second case is if the absolute value is greater than the number. If the absolute value is greater than the number, then in order to get rid of the absolute value bars, you have to create a compound inequality. You create a compound inequality by first just dropping the absolute value bars, and then you join the second inequality with the word or, and then for the second inequality, you change the direction of the symbol, of the inequality symbol, and you change the sign on the number. So these are your two cases and this is what you need to know in order to solve absolute value inequalities and so let's look at a few examples of each. So example one we want to solve the absolute value of a plus nine plus two less than or equal to six. So in order for it to look like one of those cases we just saw we have to first isolate the absolute value bars and so you do that by getting rid of this plus two and you get rid of plus two by subtracting two from both sides. So you get the absolute value of a plus nine is less than or equal to four. So now we have the absolute value is less than a number. And so this looks like a case one. If it's less than a number, then we can get rid of the absolute value by creating a three part inequality. And again, you create the three part inequality by dropping the absolute value bars, sticking that same inequality on the left side and then the opposite of that number on the other side of that absolute value bar and then solve the three-part inequality. You wanna get A in the middle by itself, so subtract nine everywhere. And you get negative 13 is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to negative five. And so the whole goal of the three-part inequality is to get the variable in the middle by itself, and we've accomplished that. And so that means my answer is everything in between negative 13, so negative 13 is here, and negative five. Since there are lines underneath, I will have brackets around negative 13 and 5, and everything in between those is shaded. So my variable is sandwiched in between those two numbers. If I had to write that in interval notation, that would be negative 13 to negative 5. That means you can take any number between negative 13 and negative 5, plug it in, and you'll get a true statement. Anything outside of that shaded region will not give me a true statement. Example two, we want to solve 10 is less than the absolute value of negative 5t minus 4 plus 2. Again, to get it to look like one of those cases we saw earlier, we have to isolate the absolute value bars first. So we'll do that by getting rid of this plus 2. Get rid of plus 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides, from both sides of the inequality symbol, okay? So I'm subtracting on this side, the left side of the inequality, and subtracting on the right side of the inequality. That leaves me with 8 less than the absolute value of negative 5c minus 4. So now I have an absolute value bigger than a number. So now since it's bigger than the number, this is a case 2. Case 2 is you create a compound inequality. So in order to create a compound inequality for the first one, you just drop the absolute value bars. But for the second one, you change the sign on the number so instead of positive 8 it'll be negative 8 and you switch the direction on the inequality symbol and you join the two inequalities with the word or and so now you just solve each inequality separately so I add 4 to both sides here you get 12 is less than negative 5c divide by negative 5 you get negative 12 fifths here, but since you divide it by a negative number, you need to change the direction of the inequality symbol. And so I'll do the same over here, add four to both sides. 
you get negative 4 is greater than negative 5c divide by negative 5 since you divide by a negative excuse me a negative number then you have to change the direction of the inequality symbol and so you would want to graph both of those so this one says that so if you get a decimal approximation for um, negative 12 fifths, you can or you can just leave it as negative 12 fifths either way negative 12 fifths is going to be to the left and 4 fifths is going to be to the right so this says that C is everything less than negative 12 fifths there is no line underneath so you will use a parentheses and so if I get a different color here that's going to be everything shaded to the left of negative 12 fifths it says that C is everything bigger than 4 fifths again there is no line underneath so you will have a parentheses and since you combine those with the word or, that means everything from both of those solution sets is a part of your solution. So if you had to write your solution in interval notation, it will be everything from negative infinity to negative 12 fifths. Always put parentheses around infinity. Negative 12 fifths is not included. Union, 4 fifths to infinity. So this will be your solution in interval notation. And so that's how you work that absolute value inequality for example three we want to solve the absolute value of k plus four is greater than zero so again we have an absolute value that's bigger than a number um, so what you want to do is in order to drop the absolute value bars you have to create a compound inequality because this is a case two which means it's greater than that number so you would start by just dropping the absolute value bars for the first one and then for the second one, you would change the direction of the inequality and then change the sign on the number. However, negative zero is still just zero. So you would solve each of these, subtract four, you would get k is greater than negative four, and then subtract four here, you would get k is less than negative four. And so if you were to graph that on the number line, if negative four is here, this one says that k is everything bigger than negative 4 and it's not included so you would do a parenthesis and shade everything bigger than negative 4. This says that k is everything less than negative 4 and it's not included so you would also put a parenthesis and shade everything less than negative 4. So when you write your solution you will have everything from negative infinity to negative 4 but negative 4 is not included so you have to separate it by writing this interval separately and that's negative 4 to infinity and since there's more than one interval you put the u in between which means you so this says that your number is basically all real numbers except negative 4 so negative 4 is the only number that would not work in this case so if you look at it this says when is the absolute value bigger than 0 in this case it's always bigger than 0 except when it equals 0 and the number that makes it equal 0 is the negative 4 if you put a negative 4 in there if there was a line underneath, if it would have said greater than or equal to, then in that case, it would be all numbers. So since it doesn't have that line underneath, you have to take out the number that makes it equal zero. Okay, these are the last two examples we're going to look at, and these are special cases. So um, we had special cases when we solved absolute value equations, and that was the case when the absolute value equals zero, which would give you one solution, and then when the absolute value equal to a negative number, which will be no solution. Well, it's kind of similar when you're dealing with inequalities of absolute values, except, um, so for this first example, we want to know when is the absolute value of y less than negative 2. So you have to think about what is an absolute value. Remember, absolute value is the distance of a number from 0. So distance always represents a positive number. So when is a positive number less than a negative number? So think about it. When is a positive number? When is 5 less than negative 2? Hopefully you said never. A positive number is never less than a negative number. So in this case, this will never be true. And so here you will have no solution. Okay. And on the flip side of that, when is a positive number bigger than a negative number? So any positive number you can think of, 10. When is that bigger than negative 2? It's always bigger than negative 2. So a positive number is always bigger than a negative number. That says negative 2. And so in this case, this will be all real numbers 
will be your solution because no matter what you plug in this will always be a true statement so these are your two special cases with absolute value inequality so this is how you solve absolute value inequalities if you have any questions if anything don't make sense and you need clarifying questions do you have clarifying questions make sure you put them in the comments below um, also um, also if um, you haven't yet and you want to see more videos from me then please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and the bell will let you know every time I upload a new video so thanks again for tuning in and until next time thanks